Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to disable automatic record save in Microsoft Access. This is something I get asked once in a while. People say, well, I open up a record and I, I make some changes to it, either intentionally, accidentally, whatever. And then if I close the form or I, you know, leave the record, those changes get saved. And that's the way that Access is designed to behave. Any changes that you make, they will be saved to the table as soon as you either close the form or move to a different record. Some people, however, don't like that option. They want it to act more like Microsoft Word, where if you make a change to a document and you close the document, it prompts you and says, do you want to save this record? Now, Access doesn't have this functionality built in, but with a little bit of programming, we can add it. We'll make a little pop-up that says save changes. Are you sure? We'll give, we'll give them three options. They can save the changes and continue, either move to a different record or close it. No will equal abort the changes, meaning don't save what I just typed in. Or cancel means I didn't mean to leave the record or close the form. Just cancel it and put me right back into editing it. So we'll do all three of those. We'll start off simple, though. Now, this is a developer level video, which means we're going to need a little bit of VBA programming. Don't be scared, though. If you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know. Then go watch this video on if then statements. We're going to use one of these. You'll need to know how the message box works. Now, normally you can just use message box to prompt a user that's you know, give them a message and say, okay, but you can actually use message box to get response back. Yes or no. All right. So go watch this. And finally, go watch my video on before update. This is an event that runs before changes are saved to the table. And there's a before update event for both a control, like a text box, and for the form itself that says before all of these changes that you entered are committed to the table, you can do something. And that something will be prompt the user, are you sure? Now, these are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them if you don't know any of this stuff. And then come on back and we'll go through it. Okay, so we have to put this code in whatever form you want this behavior in. So let's go to the customer form. We're gonna right click, go to design view, bring up the forms properties by double clicking right there on that little box, and then go to the events tab. Find the before update event. This event will run before the form is updated. In other words, you could type in whatever changes you want into whatever fields you want on this record. And then before you either move to a different record or close the form, it's gonna prompt you, are you sure? And that's what we're gonna do. So click on the dot, dot, dot right there. That'll open up your VB editor. And we're sitting right here in the private sub form before update. Notice the cancel as integer. One of the major benefits of before update is that it can be canceled before the changes are committed as opposed to after update. After update takes place after the record has been saved to the table. All right, let's put some blank space in here. I'm going to dim a variable called response, and I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's gonna be declared as a variant. Technically, message box returns an integer, but that's, that doesn't matter. You don't have to give it a type, it, it, that's fine, okay? And we're gonna say response equals message box save changes, are you sure? Okay, and then we're going to say comma, VB yes, no, cancel. Uh, you could do VB yes, no, but I like to include cancel on there because sometimes users aren't sure and they see a pop-up and they're like, oh, what do I do? And their first instinct is just to hit cancel. And if they hit cancel, it just puts them right back where they were. Okay, so that's, it. unless they're not thinking, then then, okay. And then of course a title if you want, you know, uh, save changes is fine. Okay, now, so message box is gonna pop up. It's gonna say save changes, are you sure? The user is going to see three buttons, VB yes, VB no, and VB cancel. All right, yes, no, and cancel. Now, let's do the simple one first. We're going to say if response is anything other than VB yes, then cancel equals true, and then it'll exit out because there's nothing else after that. You can put an exit sub in there if you want to. In fact, at this point, you could just do that. All right, so they're gonna be asked if they wanna cancel. If they say anything other than yes, or save changes, excuse me. If they say anything other than yes, it'll cancel and exit out and put them right, right, right back where they were. I can't talk today. All right, save that. Come back over here. Let's close it down. Open it up. 
Now, if I don't make any changes to anything, it behaves as normal, right? But if I come in here and try to change this back to Richard, and I can make other changes too, okay? Now, if I try to leave the record or close the form, it says save changes, are you sure? If I'm not sure, and I hit nowhere cancel, it just leaves me right there, okay? Try to leave, hit cancel or no. But if I try to leave and I say yes, it does. It moves to the next record and it commits those changes. See that? Okay, now let's add a third level in here. All right, I might want to save changes, yes, and also move to the next record. I might want to say no, which will mean don't save those changes, but continue on to the next record. Kind of like an abort, right? And the third option, cancel, will do what we just saw, where it'll cancel those changes and leave me there sitting on my still being edited record. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put right here in the prompt, I'm going to put what is going to happen so the user knows, right? Yes equals save changes, right? No is going to be equal to abort changes. And I'll continue this on to the next line. And we'll say cancel equals can, uh, continue editing. Okay. All right. Now we have to take all three of those options into consideration. So I'm going to say if response equals VB yes, then that means yes, I want to save the changes. So cancel equals false. Else if. All right. Oh, one word. Else if. All right. Oh, yep. That's one word, but I got to put the rest of the stuff there. Okay. So if it's yes, cancel is false. We're not going to cancel. We're going to save those changes. Okay. Otherwise, if response equals VB no, then, okay, cancel is also false. But in this particular case, I want to undo the changes. Okay. So forget what I just typed in. So type in me dot undo that undoes any changes that you just made to that record and puts things back where they were when you first started editing. Okay. Otherwise, cancel equals true. That's the uh, the cancel option. Uh. <laughs> and if you want to make these a little more visible, right? Yes, no, and cancel. Okay. So if they say yes, cancel is false. So go ahead and you know save your changes, move on. If I say no, cancel is also false, but undo the changes and move on. And if I do hit cancel, then cancel is true, meaning I want to stay here without saving anything. Save it. Give it a quick debug compile. Come back out. Meow. Close it. Open it up. All right. You put me back to where I was. Okay. And I'm going to move to the next record. Do I want to save changes? Yeah. Okay. Save it. All right. Go back. Okay. All right. It saved it. Let me make a change here. I'll become Richard Rosty. Move to another record. This time I'm going to abort the changes. I'm going to say no. It didn't cancel, but if you go back, it undid the change. See that? All right. And finally, the third option cancel, and it leaves you right where you were. And now you can hit escape if you want to. Okay. Pretty cool. All right. Now, the one thing to point out if they do cancel the changes when they try to close the form. All right, if I say cancel, you're going to get another error message saying you can't save the record at this time because the close event is also running. Okay, and the user just says, do you want to still close the database object anyways? Say no, and you'll stay right where you were. Okay, and yeah, there's ways around that error message too. If you want to see that, post a comment down below in the comment section, and I'll cover that in a future video. And again, most of this is just user perception, right? A lot of users are used to having to save the record like if they're, if they're working with Excel, a spreadsheet or Word documents, right? They're used to making some changes and having to manually save it with a save button or, you know, do something. They're not, it's, access is kind of unique in the way that it behaves. When you make a change, it automatically gets saved for you. I do have another video that I recorded a little while ago where we can actually put a save button on the form for those users who are like, how do I save this? And they don't realize that they just have to just close the form or, or leave the record. It's a training issue. But a lot of people don't get proper training. That's what I'm here for. So, <laughs> okay. But if you want to put a save button, go watch this video. I'll put a link down below.
Now, as I've been doing lately with a lot of my videos is after I put the video together, or at least, you know, run through it myself, I like to see what ChatGPT has to say about the topic. And so I fed my question into ChatGPT and let's see what it gave me. First, I said, how do I disable automatic record save in Microsoft Access? And it said to go to File, Options, Client, Settings, Saving Databases, and then automatically save object design changes. It's thinking that I mean automatically saving changes to the forms or reports themselves, okay? But I also decided to throw it a curveball. I said, well, that option doesn't exist in Access 2021. What do I do now? And so it gave me some more. It always apologizes. I apologize for the confusion. That's it's, it's okay. Don't worry about it, right? I said in Access 2021, the option to disable automatic record save is no longer available. Yeah, that's true. I think it used to be back in like 2003. You could do that under file options. And now it's telling me to go into options, client settings, advanced, and then confirm record changes. Okay, that is in there, but that has to do with action queries. If you run an update query, for example, Access says, you're about to modify 15 records. Are you sure you want to do this? That's what that setting's for. Okay, so then I said, well, confirm record changes is for action queries, like an update query. I want the user to confirm any manual changes to the record. And again, it apologized. And then guess what? It came up with my solution. Very similar to it, right? Before update event, message box, are you sure you want to save changes? If it's no, cancel is true. And so ChatGPT got to what I wanted after I had to kind of corral it a little bit, but it's it's getting there, folks. It's really starting to get smart. So uh, if you've got a problem, if you've got a question, you want to see how to do something like this, fire it into ChatGPT. It's, uh, it's scary because with just three questions, it got some code that took me years to learn. So yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to retire soon before it gets so much better. Uh, but that is your fast tip for today. Oh, I forgot to mention the class. Hang on. I cover this in a lot more detail in Access Developer Level 24. We spent a lot of time with before update. And this is a great lesson, too, because it's got one of my favorite uh, things that people always ask me, copying an order with details. You want to copy a record and all of the related child records. So you got like an invoice, right? And the invoice has an order information, an order record, and then multiple detail records. You want to copy all of that, right? Maybe take an estimate and make it an invoice but you want to leave the original estimate in the system and make changes to the invoice. So this is a very good lesson if you want to learn about that. Okay, now we're done. That is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something and had some fun. See, chat GPT isn't as fun as me yet, right? Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming 
As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.